Hello Battle Cats players, my name is Chance and welcome to my guide. Now today is what I believe to be a fairly long awaited episode, or at the very least likely to be one of the more popular ones in the series just based on this cat's overall popularity. Today we're going to be taking a look at what is for all accounts considered to be the king of slow, we're looking at Bishop Cat. Or I guess calling him the Pope of Slow might make a little bit more sense, or like the Patron Saint of Slowness, I don't know, whatever. Let me know what you guys think down beneath. In any case, this rare cat can be gained by playing the rare cat capsules, and as always, it is my hope that by really investigating all there is to know about Bishop Cat, you can ultimately make a more informed decision on how to best use him and how far to invest into him, if at all. Now then, let's get into his evolutions. Starting out with Bishop Cat himself, whose description reads, A merciful cat that brings peace and love to all of its followers. Charges for confessions might slow floating enemies. And then at level 10, it evolves into Monk Cat, whose description reads, Envelops the enemies in gracious serenity, allowing them to move to the afterlife. Might slow floating enemies. And then after level 30, as well as introducing some cat fruit and XP, he becomes Sanzo Cat. On a journey to save souls through enlightenment, mostly just beats up the local wildlife though. Might slow floating enemies and area attack. This of course follows really the standard progression for all rare cats. Now then let's move on to his overall performance here. Bishop Cat is considered to be a crowd controller through and through. A crowd controller is just a unit that's meant to inflict status effects or knock back enemies. Under pros, you have fast attack rate and animation, cheap and fast to produce, area attack in true form, and good health in true form as well. And under cons, you have low attack power, mediocre attack range, and single target for the normal and evolved. And under other traits, you have a 20% chance to slow floating enemies. Now, looking at all of this, it might be quick to dismiss Bishop Cat. And to be fair, the first two forms of Bishop Cat leave a lot to be desired. But just trust me, it's a very, very good unit. Now let's move on to discussing strategy and check out some gameplay. Firstly, as far as cost is concerned, Chapter 1, this unit will cost 330 cents, Chapter 2, 495, and Chapter 3, 660 cents. Which actually make this cat a very, very cost-effective unit, certainly for a crowd controller of its caliber. Now, unfortunately, because of the stats and range of Bishop Cat on its own, it's not really a viable unit for most of the game. Unfortunately, his range is ultimately what really hurts him here, and he's not able to really outrange many of the floating enemies you're likely to encounter. However, when there is a floating enemy that he does outrange, and you do wish to use him, he's best used in combination with another anti-floating staller. Shaman Cat comes to mind, but there are a few others. However, once you true form him, things take a dramatic turn. He gets an additional 50 range and area attack. This is when Sanzo Cat really steps into his own. And because of that range increase, he's actually able to outrange some of the more problematic floating enemies in the game. Namely, all of the Bun Bun variants as well as the Cyclones. However, bear in mind, he does still struggle against other floating enemies with longer range. However, the saving grace here is that a lot of those enemies actually have a very long pause between attacks, and due to Sanzo Cat's spammable nature and quick attack rate, it's still possible for him to be able to slow them, just not really worth building a stack of him on those stages. Granted, there is an argument that because of their slow attack rate and arguably so speed as well, that maybe just not having Sanzo Cat wouldn't make much of a difference, but I suppose it depends on your risk tolerance and the rest of your team. Regardless, however, his best use case is against the Bun Bun variants and the Cyclone variants as well. And what he does is he essentially carves out an opportunity for you to build up a stack of decent fighter units and be able to win the stage that way. Sanzo Cat is ideally best paired with a research effect up, but to be sure, he's quite spammable even without it. Sanzo Cat plays an interesting role in my head. He is very much a part of the meta, especially with a couple of his talents, which we'll discuss in a little bit. But if for whatever reason you don't have him, I'm hesitant to say he's mandatory. Certainly for the Bun Bun and the Cyclone stages, he does make them a lot easier. But I'm sure with the slow units relevant to those particular types, 
he might actually be replaceable. Ultimately, I suppose it comes down to what you have access to and how much time you're prepared to invest into those stages. But he does tend to be the go-to for a lot of the more problematic floating enemies. Now, seeing as how Bishop Cat doesn't currently have access to any cat combos, I'll just dump right in to the cat fruit. You're going to need one purple seed, which can be obtained every Tuesday, two red seeds, which can be obtained every Wednesday, two blue seeds, which can be obtained every Thursday, three yellow seeds, which can be obtained every Friday, and two green fruit, which can be obtained every Monday, and of course the 200,000 XP. Now then, I'm just going to flash a couple of the stat screens pertaining to Bishop Cat in his various forms while going over some trivia. Bishop Cat appears to have been modeled after the priests from Dragon Quest III. Sanzo Cat is based on the Journey to the West character Tang Sanzing, a Buddhist monk whose Japanese name is Genjo Sanzo. Very interesting stuff. Alright, now let's talk about talents. As far as available talents go, Sanzo Cat will have access to Weaken, which adds a 30% chance to weaken enemies to 70% for about 1.3 seconds. This improves by 0.3 seconds per level up to 4 seconds total for a total NP cost of 95. Slow, which increases slow duration by 0.4 seconds and improves by 0.07 seconds per level up to 1 second for a total NP cost of 75. Survives, which adds a 23% chance to th survive a lethal blow and improves by 3% per level up to 50% for a total NP cost of 95. Target Angel for a cost of 50. And Defense Buff, which upgrades the health of the unit by 2% per level up to 20% for a total NP cost of 75. Now, Sanzo Cat, I would make an argument for, at least for a crowd controller, has some of the best talents in the game. And honestly, you're going to want basically all of them, so this unit does require a fair bit of investment to get going, but once it does get going, it becomes incredibly useful. I'd probably start out by maybe investing into the survives first and foremost, although it depends on your point in the game. So survives is a good place to start, but if you're already encountering angel enemies, it might be worth getting the target angel first. Just seeing as how it's really easy to invest into, and it opens up a lot of pathways for Sanzo Cat. Anyways, either survives or target angel first, depending on what part of the game you're in, and then weaken and slow, and lastly the defense buff. That's my own like headcanon way of doing it, but certainly the top three ones to invest into are target angel, survives, and weaken. Really, whatever order you tackle them in, I'm not too sure it would matter too much. It would really just come down to a point of the game you're in. But even outside of those, there are no bad talents here, and ultimately you're going to want to invest into all of them. Sanzo Cat also has access to an orb slot, and you're going to want to either put defense up against angels or defense up against floating in here. Just because he's not really an attacking unit, and he doesn't have anything else that orbs particularly correlate with. Ultimately, he shouldn't be very high on your orb priorities, but if you're just looking to put something in the slot, then one of those two is ideal. Anyway, now that you know what I think about Bishop Cat, let's hear what all of you had to say about him. Courier Cat says, best anti-floating cat, and I largely agree with that. Certainly within his kind of like rare bracket, he's pretty dang useful. Bee Eater, somewhat sarcastically, I imagine, says outclasses by Sanzo. Pretty sure he meant to say outclassed, but whatever. And at I'm freaking stupid says I lack the green cat fruit to tell my opinion. Brother, please get on that. He's such a usable cat. But fair enough, I'm sure you'll get him eventually. And as always, if you would like to be featured in this part of the video, feel free to check out our community tab and comment on the relevant posts. And that's really all there is to say about Sanzo. If there's anything I missed or anything I should have gone into more detail on, please let me know down beneath in the comment section. Thank you for watching until this point. Don't forget to like and subscribe for Cat God's Blessing on your next gotcha roll. And as always, I'll be talking to you guys soon.